Out next topic is about defining a class. As we already know, in OOPS, class is the basic unit of encapsulation that holds data and functions together, which in turn defines the nature of an object. It is created using the keyword class. Syntax for its usage is as given here. The class name is a valid identifier for the class. Object names is an optional list of names for objects of this class. Members are the data and functions which we declare in this class. An access specifier is the level of accessibility provided to member data and functions. It declares the category of security level provided to data and functions. We will now look deeper into the access specifiers. It is used to set the visibility or access rights to data and function members within a class. An access specifier can be any one of the following. Private, public, or protected. Private members of a class are only accessible by other members within the same class or from within friends of the class. For example, private int p, q. It is a declaration that p and q are integer variables with top category security level where they can be accessed only by other members of the same class or by friends of this class. We will learn more about friends of a class in the upcoming video sessions. Public members of a class are accessible from anywhere where the object is visible. An application can access the private member data of a class only through its public member functions. For example, public in P, Q. Next is the protected members of a class, which are accessible by members of the same class, by their friends, and also by members of their derived classes. Here is an example of how protected members are declared. Now, what are member data? and member functions. Member data are the variables declared within a class to store data. Every single object is a separate entity, and hence, every object of the same class has separate copies of data members. The memory allocation of data members is done at the time of object creation. Member functions are the functions or methods within a class which provides functional solution and also acts as the medium through which a class interacts with the outside world. Only one set of member functions are created for all objects of the same class. Memory allocation of member functions is done at the time of class creation through the function definition. Creating objects. We learned that a class holds data and functions together and sets visibility options for being accessed by external programs. A class becomes practically executable when it is instantiated. The result of instantiation is the creation of an object, which is the actual, real-time implementation of the features of a class. An object is therefore, the instance of a class, and there can be many such instances. Objects are created by declaring it along with the class name, or by declaring it as part of class definitions, where we define functionality of member functions. Syntax to declare an object, along with class name. Class name, object list. Syntax to declare an object as part of the class definition. Here, the list of objects are declared at the end of the class definition and is part of the class definition. We will now look at an example. Remember that if not specified, all members of a class are assigned with private access by default. Therefore, members that are declared before a class specifier are automatically assigned with the private access visibility. For example, to calculate voltage equals current times resistance, let's declare a class like this. This is the class declaration. Here is the data variable declaration with private visibility. This is the access specifier, the scope visibility statement, which declares that all data and functions written below this statement will be having public access. This is the declaration of function named set value with public visibility. It would carry two float variables as parameters and would return no value. This is the declaration of another function named volt, again with public visibility. It would carry no variables as parameters and would return one float value. Here is the object reference or the object variable declaration as part of class definition. One or more objects can also be declared outside a class definition like this. Voltage, V1, V2, where voltage is the class we had declared above. V1 and V2 are the objects we create. 
Until now, we only included function declaration, not their definition. A function within the class can be defined in either of these two ways. Inside the class declaration or outside the class declaration as inline function using the scope resolution operator. We will apply both these methods of function definition in our next program. After the previous declarations of the class voltage and the object v1, we can call any public members of the object v1 within the body of the program by using the object name followed by a dot and then the name of member data or the function. For example, note these two lines. v1.setValue, 10, 2.5. It specifies that 10 ampere current and 2.5 ohms of resistance are passed in the form of parameters to set value function of the object v1. This function will be used to assign dynamic values to current and resistance so that the voltage required can be calculated. Let's look at the next function call. v equals v1.volt function. Here voltage is calculated by calling the volt function of object v1, and the result, that is 25, is stored in variable v. Note that 10 ampere current, with resistance 2.5 ohms, will require a voltage of 25 volts, for being moved from one point to another. So now let's try applying all that we learned on class and objects so far, in our next program. It's our program number 53. Using class and objects, find the voltage required for given values of current and resistance. The formula is V equals I times R. So here comes the program code. And this is the class named voltage. At the end of this class declaration on line 14, we have declared the object named V1. What it does is, it will create the object V1 by allocating memory storage space for this object, and then will assign the reference of memory address location to V1. The object will be copied with everything as declared and defined in the class, voltage. So we have two float variables, I and R, with individual memory spaces allocated. Then we have access specifier public. It means, the declarations that come here onwards will be publicly accessible within and outside this object. It also means that I and R, which were declared before the public statement, will have restricted access as they will be private by default. Then we have the set value function declaration. It is defined after the main function, from lines 25 to 29. It would carry two float variables as parameters, and would return no value. We also have the volt function. It would carry no variables as parameters, and would return one float value. Note that the volt function is defined within the class itself, here the object. Remember that every distinct object of a specific class will have separate copies for their data variables. But the objects will retain only one copy of the function. And so, all objects of the same class will share the same function. The program control after entering main function will allocate space for float variable named v. On next line, it calls set value function of the object v1. Two values, 10 and 2.5, are passed into this function. So the set value function of object v1 is invoked. It's defined here. The values passed into it are referred as a and b, respectively. This value in a is assigned to i. And then the value in B is assigned to R. In the program code, program control shifts to line 19. Here, the function named a volt is called and the result it brings back will be stored in variable V. So the volt function works for object V1. What does it do? It returns the value of I multiplied by the value of R. So 10 times 2.5 is returned to the main function where it was called. The result 25 is stored in variable v. On line 20 of the program code, we instruct to print the given value of current supplied. On output screen it's printed. On line 21 it's instructed to print the given value of applied resistance. It's printed on screen. On line 22 we have asked to print the value of voltage required. The value we computed and stored in v is printed on screen. And then we come to an end of this program. In this program, you learned how to apply class and objects for finding the solution to a given problem. You can modify this program to ask the values of current and resistance from a user at runtime, and then provide them with exact value for the voltage required. You can then reuse the class or its object in this or other programs.